we need to make sure that the volunteers are healthy and whatever medical conditions they may have is well controlled. This allows us then to study and better understand the safety of the vaccine. There is always risk to participating in the trial. I would think even if you were to mop the floor at home, there is risk. If you were to drive the car, there is risk also. It is just that in clinical trials, the risk is accentuated because they have to tell you all that is possible could happen which makes people a bit afraid of clinical trials in general. But frankly speaking, I feel that there is nothing at all to be afraid of. Some people may worry that the speed at which some of these trials are taking place, there may be questions or doubts about their safety. What is your response to that? I will feel that for every vaccine to be released to the masses, there will need to be extensive research and study, and it's going to take time. So more clinical research participants will be able to facilitate and expedite the time taken to release this vaccine. So phase one is to ask the question, how high a dose can we go before the side effects become a bit intolerable? So ideally, you want to give as much vaccine as you can so that then the immune system has a chance of making a good and strong response that will protect the people against the SARS-CoV-2 infection and COVID-19. But at the same time, when you increase the dose, then side effects start to become more common. So we're just trying to find that sweet spot so that we get the best response possible without all the unnecessary side effects. Have you found the sweet spot? It's in progress. So we are into our first two doses now. Possibly by end of this month, we'll be hopefully dosed everyone with all four doses that we think will be within that range. Then we need to observe over several months just to see that one, what kind of side effects they develop, and two, that the immune response is robust. On top of that, we're going to ask, what if we give a second dose, would that be useful? I think that this has a chance of being a one-dose vaccine, and that would be great. What normally takes, say, two to three years or even more, you're compressing it within a very short time frame. Is that cause for worry? Today, we have far better ways of assessing safety in humans than to go through the kind of animal studies that we have done in the past. So, unfortunately, nobody's come back to look at this 10-15 year timeline and say which part of what's involved in there are really necessary and which parts are really completely non-informative and re systematically remove those that are not needed. That hasn't happened. So, in some ways, this pandemic may be spurring that process. It is most likely to occur during the Northern Hemisphere winter months that would be December, January, February. And this is because assuming Singapore starts to reopen, the airport is active, we have travellers coming in from all over the world, they may bring the imports. There's no way we can promise that the vaccine, if given before the second wave in Singapore, will stop the second wave. But there is a major advantage being involved in clinical trial. If we are able to start phase three trial before the second wave arrives in Singapore, if it does, we have a very quick chance of seeing a very early readout of what happens to the, those who receive the vaccine. Then we might be able to get a faster answer as to whether the vaccine works. And the sooner we get it, the sooner we can get the vaccine available to everyone. Well, I couldn't think of any silver lining in the next spike of infections. That's one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>